Hello lover friends, this week we travel back to the future, assert Sam 2, and it's likely we have more eloquent methods for you. Let's go. Let's start with some new eloquent methods. So I do grab here all the podcasts here from this application, just want to see the title. And here they are, this is what we got. But if you want to look for some more specific podcast titles, we can add another word class and say word title equals to level. Here we don't get any results because there is no title with just level. So maybe what we want to do here is we want to use the like operator. And now we can say um, with the percentage here at the front and back, give me all the podcasts where the title contains level. This is what we're asking here. And if we run this, we can see this is working. Now we have all the titles where Laravel is in the name. But now there is a nicer way we can do this. So we can get, get rid of the like operator and we can see where like. And this should give us the same result. And yes, it does. So this is now a new method that we can use where I don't have to provide the type operator in here. You can just use this new method where like and then just use it like you do. And it's also cool because it works the same for SQLite and MySQL. Of course, we also got were not like. We also have two podcasts here where we don't have level in the name. And you can also use those methods with or at the beginning, so or were not or or were like. I always love when we get those little additions to the framework that make our lives a little bit easier and more readable with those new eloquent methods. Thank you, Einar. Next, let's make our code clean and more readable with a new mail assertion. In this test, I want to make sure that a specific published email is being sent to an author um, when a podcast is being published. And we're doing this by faking our mail system. We are getting here a new factory podcast. Then we send the request to a specific endpoint. We make sure everything is okay. And then we have this assertion here at the bottom below where we make sure that a specific email, this one here, was sent. Let's run this and this is passing. Yes, it does. But I want to make sure that this is being sent to a specific user. So we need to make sure who gets this email. And we can do this by providing a closure here. He will, you will get an instance of our podcast published email. And then inside this closure here, I can return a Boolean. And on our email, we have some specific helpers here. And one is the has to, I want to make sure that our mail has a specific user attached who would receive this email. And he want to make sure that this is from our podcast, which we currently don't have access to. So we need to provide this here as well to our closure like this. And then the podcast has an author and the author has an email. And of course, this is not a function. This is the property. All right, let's try this out. All right, just to make sure I'm not, this is not passing because of anything else. This should fail, yes it does. So let's bring this back here. And this is the one passing, all right. So this works, but this is, yeah, um, not so fun to write. Of course, we can convert this to a closure. This looks better because we don't have to bring in the podcast instance. We already have access to this. This should pass as well as it does. Yeah, but still, um, yeah, this could be better. And now this is way better. So what we can do now is we can get rid of the closure and we can provide as a second argument now just the string, which is the email that we want to make sure the email was sent to. So we want to make sure that we send an email, this email to this user. Let's run this and you can see this is passing as well and this is now way nicer than before. Of course, if you're sending your email to multiple users, you can also pass an array as the second argument, which will work as well. So check out this new method. I think that's pretty useful. Thank you, Jason. And last, let's travel back to the future, but just for some microseconds. In this test here, I want to make sure that when I create a podcast and then I travel 10 seconds to the future, which I can do with this method here. By the way, this is just the same as this one, the travel function, which I had before this one. It's just a helper from past, which is a little bit nicer. And then I want to make sure that when I visit the podcast page, 
that I see that um, the podcast was created 10 seconds ago. Let's run this. This is passing. Yeah, so the travel method is really nice for these situations where I want to make sure we see some specific amount in your UI that has passed like this one. But now we have something new. So let's try this again. Let's copy the whole test here. And let's call it, it shows microseconds since created. So what we can do now is we can also add here microseconds. So let's try this again. I create a podcast. I travel 10 microseconds to the future, of course. And then I want to see 10 microseconds ago in the output when I visit the podcast show page. So when I run this, this is now failing because what we actually see here is um, that this was created 3,697 microseconds ago, which is around 4 milliseconds. Okay, so um, why is this not working anymore? So the reason is that here we travel 10 microseconds to the future, but after this point, the code is still running and the time is still running as well. So this means when we visit this page, some time is going to be um, added to the current time. So this means this will be more than 10 microseconds. An easy fix for this is what we can do. We can just freeze the time with the freeze time method. So this makes sure that the time um, stands still and only it gets added what we add here. So let's try this again. You can see this is now passing. So seeing that a podcast was created 10 microseconds ago isn't probably what you will need, but I'm pretty sure there are other use cases for something like a trading system or when you're working with stocks where time is really crucial or when you're working on something on performance or benchmarking something. This is when microseconds could be very useful to you as well, but I'm eager to hear how you are going to use this new microseconds method on the travel helper. Thank you, Tim. That's a wrap for today. Let me know which feature you like the most in the comments as always, and see you the next time. Bye.